All right, all right. Well, today I am going to work on a chainsaw. Uh, the guy had it. Um, he said it was working fine, and all of a sudden he just couldn't get it started. And this one, I believe it has been worked on before. But uh, let me show you what I got. Yeah, so this this is a Poolin Pro, or just a Poolin, uh, super clean, 2150. These were actually pretty pretty common. Uh, sold a bunch of them out at I, I probably Lowe's or Home Depot or something, and uh, and they were pretty affordable. They worked for a while. This is definitely not for the professional arborist, so to speak, but uh, but for home use and you know light use out on the out on the farm or something. They did pretty good, and I've replaced. Um, as long as there wasn't any cylinder damage and all that stuff, I have replaced uh, uh, piston rings on these before, and gives new life to them, and just keep on trucking, right? Uh, but he said it just won't start. And I think I see the problem already. This bulb, yeah, there's some cracks in it there, so you can tell there's, it's just not pumping any, any fuel through the carburetor. Uh, that's one thing I see right off the bat. Um, let's see, let me put this camera down. Alright, so my, my little work table here is kind of crowded, but should be able to get this done. Let's see. Well, it definitely has compression. That sucker is, uh, it is pretty tight. Let's see. Yeah. There is some gas in there. Well, I say gas. It could be water for all I know. Um, is there a filter in there? We might have to put a new filter on. So let me drain whatever fuel is in here and see what it looks like. Is it gas or is it water? And there goes the uh, filter. Okay, looks like it was fuel. There's no There's no water in there, that's good. So that broke off. But there was enough fuel in there, it should have been coming up through the bulb, right? So we know we gotta replace that. Yeah, there's some little holes. There's a little hole there. And on this side. Yeah, all the way around. So, well, let's, uh, let me see if I have a bulb this small. This is kind of a small bulb. Filter looks good. Let's see, what now? I need to take that off. 
This looks like an 8 millimeter. So, you can see I'm trying to follow the, the fuel lines here. So this one popped off. I was looking all over the carburetor where this one comes in. This is the return line that goes back into the tank. And if you can see, there's the little hole right here. So that fuel line just popped out of there. Let me get a pick or something. And there it goes. All right. Take all this off. God, that thing just pinched right off. This is the the input line that had the uh, the filter on it, and it just plugs down in here also into the tank. But everything is just so brittle on it. And let me disconnect the the throttle. There we go. So the return line is the long one, the input is the short one. All right. Always get them mixed up, but all right, so let's measure off some fuel lines. Hopefully I have some. These are pretty small diameter, uh, but we'll see if we can, what we can do to make it work. Alright, can you see what I'm doing there? I know all this lighting is awkward. We got half sunlight, half shade, but uh, I did find some uh, the small diameter fuel lines here so we can measure this off. We've got this one. This one was the input suction on the bulb. Let's squeeze that on. Yep. And now we need this small one. The return line going short one just right there. Let's measure this off. I'm going to need a little more because I know this cracked off down in the tank. So let's go about that long. Well, before I cut it, this is another deal where I'm going to have to use that little wire um, and we can fish everything through. Well, it might go in. So my little pull wire, a lot of times, <laughs> these are really great to use. Um, but on these real, real tiny, small diameter ones, it's hard to even just get it through this hole. Uh, even that's oversized. Even the barb at the end of this is kind of, kind of long. Now this one, it is a, a larger diameter tube and it looks like it can go in. So this one, I'm going to see if I can't work its way in there. With a little shot of WD-40. Let's see if we can... I think it is going down. It's 
So what I'm doing, I'm just slowly, you know, rotating it and adding pressure, and it's just, I can feel it here at the bottom. It's starting to make its way through, so slowly but steady. Alright, I think that's got it. And we didn't need it that long, did we? Just uh, where that sticks out. So about hmm, right there. So I left enough slack, if you can see this, I left enough slack in the, in the fuel line so that I can attach the bulb. Like that. So next time we have to replace it, you know, you don't have to take a, the carburetor back off. You have enough slack to to detach and attach another bulb. So that goes around to here on the carburetor. So now let's get this bigger tube, this larger line. Let me find one. So from the bottom where it goes in, it needs to stick out about that much. for the filter and then from here up to the carburetor so from there to there so that's not that's not much at all but the biggest thing we're going to use this pull through and I'll spin this around so you can get a good get a good look at it I'm going to cut it just a tiny bit longer than what we need. And I'm going to cut it at an angle. So can you see it a little better? So we need to poke it through this hole. Let's feed it around. Where is it? There it is. Alright. So it's sticking through there. Now we can barb on it. A little dab at WD-40. But it is probably still pretty slick, you know, from the uh, you know the oil and fuel mix. But now when you're poking it through, make sure you see that little uh, pointed end of the fuel line and work its way through. And before I pull it all the way through, I'm going to attach the filter. There we go. Tight squeeze. And there it is. 
interesting to see how it, uh, it pulls through there. So we got way more than what we need, but that's fine. That ought to do it. And let's see, it went in this way, right? And this one goes up to this top one. So let's cut it off about right there. Yeah. So I got a lot more than what I actually needed, but better safe than sorry right let me get this barb off of there so that's it now we can reconnect the carburetor first I think we need to get the throttle on there here so there's the choke now let's see if we can slide this on they ought to do it Let's see, which way did that go in there? That way? Or that way? That way. <laughs> Let me have a seat. Let's get this on and get this tightened up. All right, let's get this screwed on. Go ahead and screw this uh, this bulb down here. Make sure it's not kinking up too bad. I know I put a lot of extra line on there, but once you put it in place, make sure nothing's in the way of your throttle and all that good stuff. And that should be fine. Spark plug on. Let's put our cover on first. There's the filter. Just had to double check. Just make sure your throttle and choke 
uh, it's operating like it should. Now the flywheel cover, and it's fairly clean. Let's put a little gas in there and uh, see if it'll crank. All right, that's about halfway full. Put it on the ground. So I have to pull it left handed anyway. Let's see. How's that? Okay, let's check the bulb. There she blows. Choke is on. adjustment and get a screwdriver Okay, I'm starting from scratch. I just backed them off one and a half turns each. And we'll see what happens. This is a little better.
right, all right. That got it. So adjusting the carburetor, I just had to, uh, I started off at one and a half uh, rotations open, you know, out, and uh, ended up being about two and a half it needed on each. Uh, and then a slight adjustment on the uh, on the idle. But other than that, it's running good. So it was just the, uh, the bulb and the fuel lines need to be replaced. And everything else looked good on it. So I guess that's it for this video. So once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video. You got a new toy? Hmm? Ha, ha, ha.